Hey, welcome back to another video. Sorry for the delay in uh, content. My health hasn't been that great, so I haven't been able to make any videos. But hopefully I'll be able to make some more videos uh, regularly this year. So, knockback. That's what we're going to look at in this episode. But the first thing we want to do is when you start your project up, you'll notice we've got this error here. So if we go into the animator, click on ledge grab, and untick that parameter just there. That will get rid of that error. And we also want to jump into the player controller. Get rid of this disable movement from there. Jump down to fixed update and change that to cam move. And I also believe we're going to have it in the ledge grab, so let's just see what errors we get. Let's get rid of them. Let's ball jump. So get rid of it from the wall jump script as well. Save that. Okay, that should got rid of all of those errors. Now where you put this script it's up to you but create a new C sharp script and we call this one knockback and once that's compiled we'll open that up into Visual Studio okay first thing we're going to need is our variables Okay, so these are the variables we're going to need. We're going to need a float for the knockback length, a float for the force, uh, a reference to our player controller on our rigid body, and we want a public ball is hurt. So if you want to pause the video and copy those down, we'll now jump into our Unity base methods. Okay, we can get rid of update. And we just want start and all we're going to do is going to get the two player uh, components so we're going to get the controller and the rigid body and then we want to jump down into our user methods okay in our user methods we're going to have a public function called do knockback that's going to start this co-routine here so using system collections to get rid of that. So start co-routine, disable player movement, knockback length, which is the float we set up there. And then we're going to set the rigid body velocity to negative the facing direction. So if we're facing right, it will send us left. And if we're facing left, it will send us right and up. And in the co-routine, we're going to set can move to false, is hurt to true. We're going to wait for the said time, then we're going to re-enable player movement and re uh, set is hurt to false. So if we can save that. Jump back into here, and now if we create another script, I'm going to call this one Damage Player. I'm not going to actually do any damage. We should just see a printout in the debug log that the player is damaged. Open that up. And in the Unity methods, we want void on trigger enter. Okay, and then we want to check if collision dot tag equals equals player. We do collision dot game object dot get component knockback. Do not back. Oh, 
Okay, in fact, let me just wrap that up in some brackets. Copy all of this. See, I'm all butter fingers again today. Sorry about this. And uh, here you would damage the player. Okay, we can save the damage player script. Come back into Unity. Now I've got these little spikes down here, so if we go into our starting frame, we see the three spikes. All I've got on them so far is a sprite renderer and a polygon collider set as trigger. If we just drag that damage player on, Now hit play. Okay, what's giving us a null reference? Uh, might help if I actually add the knockback script to the player. So where did I put it? Physics. Add the knockback. Now hit play. As you can see, it's knocking our player back nicely. So you can just add your damage into your knockback. And that's basically how we can add knockback to our player controller. It's only a quick video, this one. In the next video, we're going to be looking at adding some full damage. Then we've got some slopes and some final optimizations. Hope you found this video useful. Please hit like and subscribe if you found it helpful. And I will see you in the next video.